Let there be peace and love among all beings of the universe. Let there be peace, let there be peace. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaskar, Namaskar, welcome to Sasa. Witness. Who is the witness of all the activities, individual activities you are active from morning to night? This is individual activity. Then universal activity, sun shining, moon, stars, earth revolving waves rising from the ocean, air moving, activity. Who is the witness of all this activity? Who was the witness before the creation of the universe, before the beginning of the <coughs> Creator itself? Who are the witness? Who is now the witness of what is going on? And who will be the witness after the dissolution? What is this witness? And we call this witness as Brahman, and Brahman cannot be translated into <coughs> any other language. I can't call it God. God is also in the mind. Mind could be earlier. The mind creates, thought creates God. So God must be in the thought of the mind. Yet, who is the witness of the mind, thought, God? So this word, Brahman, is that which was witness before the creation of the universes and which will remain the witness after the dissolution, and that word we call Brahman, omniscient, omnipresence. So in English, you see, they use it absolute, but then also it will not match the correct meaning of Brahman. So Brahman I cannot ex explain, but then I have explained this witness. <clears throat> the word is Sakshi. Sakshi is who is not in touch with the activity, just witnessing, as the witness has got nothing to do with the activity. If some quarrel goes on, the judge in the court calls for the witness who has not taken part in the quarrel if whatever he says, he is accepted, otherwise the case does not move, would be dismissed. I remember there was one quarrel in Varanasi. Some, some years, some centuries ago, it is very interesting, maybe 400 years ago, the two people were quarreling and they were arrested by the police, produced before the magistrate in the court. So the court, the magistrate wants a witness because this each man says, I was going and it was this man who attacked, and both were making the same statement. 
and now the judge wanted someone who is a witness so asked the police to bring someone who has witnessed this squirrel this fight so there was only one man he was there and the police people knew him and uh, the police also knew this man is a saint this man is a saint so they left him but it was only this man alone it was very early hours of the morning when they started they were having some revenge upon each other so they found time and one person attacked so this man was produced in the court and this man says he who has seen the witness is one who has seen the fight and he who has seen speaks not and he who speaks sees not do you understand what does it mean he who sees speaks not and who see, speaks sees not because he said the eyes has seen this man said i will later tell you who was this man i have seen some people fighting i have seen eyes were the witness but they speak not eyes don't speak it is the mouth that speaks but mouth has not seen therefore what could be said and you know who it was it, it was kabir for the first time he touched about the witness you see so knowing that it was kabir and he may be speaking from some different angle and everybody speaks about this absolute brahman atman consciousness bliss existence and you listen very well <laughs> now who is the witness when the word is spoken consciousness and you understand very well the sages say so <laughs> you have heard from the saints and you have read from the sutras also you are brahman you are atman you are existence you are consciousness you are bliss you are sat chit anand you have listened it after having listened ears have listened ears are listening this thing you are that tat tvam asi you are it. even you say aham brahmasmi i am that i am that witness i am that source you are the source having known that you are the witness you are the source even when you hear you are the witness who is real witness no one knows it and that witness is residing in our hearts but when we act any activity which is going on individual activities to whom we attribute so that is also called self i have done it i myself did it you see i myself saw it so who is this i myself side i myself did it so this 
witness is something else you see and yet you see i myself saw it it was i who did it even then you are conscious even then you are conscious of this that i have done it even you know that i have done it you are conscious of this i have done it also you are conscious you are conscious of even i when the word i have done it you see so what is this who's conscious of this first thought and that must be the witness who can ever see it who can ever describe it many people who have understood it and this understanding may not be correct understanding having understood it i understand i have understood it even this understanding is not from the witness is witness is witnessing this understanding also witnessing is the witness of understanding also so that witness is residing in all hearts because it is omnipresent omnipresent everywhere it is present there is no atom in the universe where it is not existing because it is existence itself therefore it is witness so it is available here and now this witness is this witness is available here and now you try to understand it you won't howsoever you may try you will fail but there is some way no way call it way or no way doesn't matter then this witness will be directly witnessed by itself by a very special technique and that technique is with the with the guru with the master with the teacher you see and when he will be happy on one he will hand over the key of the this treasure otherwise he will be speaking and you will be mistaken that i have found i have received brahm gyan brahm knowledge of the brahman what it could be i do not know because recently many people declare that they have become teachers they have improved they are superior than teachers and they are superior than the buddhas itself so maybe the teacher have given them thinking a child the teacher may have given them a piece of chocolate not giving them a million dollar no because the child may throw it away doesn't know the value of the million dollar currency paper out of which he could buy the chocolates and eat throughout his life and perhaps for next generation a child is a child he is happy with the little chocolate <laughs> and dancing you see once upon a time a jackal no jackal or a fox what you understand he found some something something he found it's a it's a punjabi proverb i don't think you will understand <laughs> but i i translate it as best as i could <laughs> this fox found they say there's a musk available in the musk deer rarely and it's very costly musk 
one deer has a musk deer, it's called musk deer. It is in the navel of the deer, you see. And that deer also wants to seek this, seek this musk and doesn't know how to find this musk. It is in his own navel, doesn't know, doesn't know this. And he goes all around smelling each tree, each plant, each stone to find this musk. But no one knows, no one tells him, it is in your own never. So somehow this fox, this jackal also heard. So he also found something. And then he thought, this is a musk I have seen, I have found it. So he went on the top of some mountain, some mountain, I don't remember any mountain in California. He went on the top and started crying. Here I have found this musk. This is the musk which no one had. And this musk I have found. This is the better musk than the musk, deer's musk. Even Buddha has not found it. So these jackals will bark for some time and keep quiet when the people will know this is a jackal and this musk is not a musk. Maybe some something picked up from the garbage. It's not it. So coming to the point, this witness, <laughs> this witness is told to you is the prasadam of the Guru handed over to one who is really very beautiful whom the Master is in love with, whom this light, this witness is in love with. It's not your choice, you can't choose, you do not know what it is. So it is that witness, it will reveal itself to itself and you will witness it also if you are very beautiful, you see, and you are loved by this witness itself. So if you are loved by this witness, you become one as... So some people have found it not that not that it's rare. Now, it used to be very rare. Here, there, nowhere you used to hear in centuries people used to go for tapas penance for years, you see. And very someone here and there have found it, you see. But here, this is, this is Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga. So this Yuga, has one benefit, you see, may have, may have its other demerits also, but one merit is here and that is now becoming evident and it is known because you need not go to forest for penance. Now, this Kali Yuga, has one good property and it is known for the first time. Otherwise people go for thousands of years and incarnation after incarnation, millions of incarnations you have to take to get free. And now here you will see that we have fixed time of one instant one, just one instant of time, a twinkle of the eye, snap of the finger, not doing anything, not thinking anything, not activating a single thought from the mind. So these are the benefits of this yoga in which we are born, particularly this century, this century. You have, 
not to do anything because it's a witness and if you want to gain anything the concept to achieve anything perhaps you will not be successful and if you give up all what you want all your intentions to gain anything afresh any intentions any kind of notions that it should be like this it should have been like this it has to be like this all these notions have to set apart only what you are keeping keeping in your pocket you have to throw it out all the burden that you have carried may have been for years you may have carried a burden and to remove that burden you have not to carry any more burden in the shape of any sadhana any practice whatsoever and that's not the way it is already revealed it's already revealed only you have to watch this revelation allow it to reveal unto you and merge into it without any hesitation without any <coughs> doubt no doubt don't entertain any doubt that i am not this no doubts no notions so how simple it could be <laughs> yesterday someone has this, many people who have returned from here and they have been writing yesterday i received one letter i will share this letter with you <laughs> This letter is from Saint Pierre de Chatus means France. This wonderful visit gave me the desire to write and try again to express what I am presently living <clears throat> which is not so easy for me especially in English language. As you already know I noticed since I met you for the first time a subtle but fundamental change in my life took place this feeling is revived sometimes without apparent reasons also in special circumstances such as in the presence of maya the first recognition of the permanent change by the word permanent the first recognition of a permanent change by the word permanent i wish to point to the difference with experiences i lived previously which passed in time was during my stay close to you in hardwar <clears throat> when i noticed the disappearance of my mental images 
and the opening of the limitless space. You may remember the talks we had about this at that time. Since then, this subtle and essential change is available in the background and reveals itself instantly when attention is given to it. <laughs> yes. But I have made some further discoveries which I would like to explain here. What I later found out is that the mental images have not disappeared altogether, <clears throat> but that their quality has radically changed. What is now lived are fleeting, imprecise images appearing from the disappearing into the void. What is now lived are the fleeting, imprecise images appearing from the disappearing into the void almost instantly. As if thinking could not exist without them. With this quality, images no more disturbed peace. Thinking is no more lived as separate from void. Someone understanding? <laughs> this means that the whole world is lived differently, as not having a definite separate existence, because the world is known through thinking. However, concerning perceptions, a certain duration is built in giving the feeling that they exist independently. This is trick of time, which does not hold on if time is also seen as thinking. The disappearance of time means ecstatic perception, which is not available at each instant. But the knowledge of a rope looking as a snake is always available. In both cases, apparent separate objects are revealed as pure consciousness, therefore not separate at all. You said that when one sees any name or form, one is asleep. So what I am trying to describe here turns to be a change in the quality of the dream. I could then say that I have shifted from deep dreaming to subtle dreaming. The knowledge that I am subtly dreaming brings the knowledge that forms are nothing else than pure consciousness. What else could they be? Another way to try to describe this would be to say that the gross mind has turned into subtle mind without which names and forms could not be perceived at all. The gross mind used to create its own permanent existence and the objective existence of the body, senses, objects. Here, the rope is lived as if it was a snake. When the gross mind is destroyed, the subtle mind raises with thinking 
and either sees the rope as a rope. For instance, in ecstatic perception, or knows special knowledge that the snake is a rope. Although some kind of dreaming appears there, subtle dreaming, the special knowledge of the body, senses, objects, having no objective existence is present. Now, <clears throat> who creates the concept of subtle mind? The subtle mind itself, this is when the subtle mind burns itself out and that the sense of deep mystery is present, beyond time, beyond description. I, get, I take great pleasure in sending you a recorded copy of the dialogue you had with Christopher Titmus in 1991, to which Nicole, Mark and I have recorded a French translation on one of the two tracks, as done as a tape previously sent to you. With love, Ella. <laughs> so, so, this is what we have been speaking about. Particularly this. Yesterday we were speaking quite two, three people among us, you see. When the gross mind is destroyed, the subtle mind raises with thinking and either sees the rope as a snake, for instance, ecstatic perception, that the snake is a rope. Although some kind of dreaming appears there, subtle dreaming that the special knowledge of the body, senses and objects having objective existence now, who creates the concept of subtle mind, the mind itself? This is when the subtle mind burns itself out and that the senses of deep mystery is present beyond time and beyond description. Justin, who is Justin? No, Justin. Can you come here? Justin. Justin. Until yesterday it was not clear why I had come to India to see you. Where do you come from? Seattle. From? Seattle. Then you spoke of the barrier of understanding. There is understanding and sometimes even pride is understand, pride in understanding. Yes. <laughs> That's very right. 
So the wave persists in believing it is the ocean, which is a painful burden for such a small thing. The mind would give way to the heart, but it is now clear that the mind and the understanding cannot bring this to pass. <laughs> yes. Then I know, Papaji, that you are love and that all things are possible in your presence, may I come, just welcome. So, well, excellent, very good letter here. Hmm. So what I have been speaking since morning is this mind and its understanding cannot bring this to pass. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't grasp understanding and mind, you see here, don't touch understanding means mind, don't touch mind. In other words, don't give a thought, don't give rise to a single thought. Because this is understanding, you know? so don't understand about anything what's going on now. So, if you if you decide firmly, as firm as you did in understanding before, so firmly, even half of this will do. <laughs> even half of it will do, <laughs> and just for one second, you see. Keep yourself free of every kind of understanding. Then, after that, if you listen what I speak, listen, only listen and not understanding, <laughs> then it is time for you to speak. Okay. If you follow what I speak and don't try to understand what I speak, and about hearing also, I have given reference, even hearing is not that I speak about. So it is for you to speak now. Your name is just in, no? <laughs> just what's your name? Did you did you find out the meaning before? Just in, no? <laughs> just what your name is, no? It's a very good name. <laughs> just in is just in. That's all. Huh? Yes, yeah, that is just it. <laughs> so now let the just in speak to just out. <laughs> let him just in speak just out. It can do it also. No? Just in, just out, there is no difference. No? What could be difference between just in and just out? Same thing. Just is just, in is in. <laughs> Being with you, there's an opening of the heart. Yes. <laughs> um, and in order for that to happen, the mind. Um, has to stop. There's no, I can't do both. 
This is good understanding. I can't be both. I can't be both. So, <laughs> so this you have obliterated. This both is gone. <laughs> there never have been both any time. You see, <laughs> both cannot stay <laughs> together. You know. <laughs> so both have to disappear. <laughs> And when both disappear, then you are just in, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> very, very good. When did you come here? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can tell me, I can't remember if you tell to anybody else.